Hell House by Richard Matheson. So, Richard Matheson is best known, perhaps, for his brief and oft-adapted classic horror novel, I Am Legend. But amongst the other major works of his career, there is this. And I saw this book in a bookstore, a used copy of this book, thankfully, uh, for just a few bucks. And having read I Am Legend, I was like, hey, another Richard Matheson book. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy that. You know, maybe it'll be as good as I Am Legend. And it wasn't. <laughs> Actually, the disparity in quality between I Am Legend, which is, I guess, his masterpiece, and Hell House is kind of shocking. However, this book is still kind of fun in a dumb sort of way, and it can provide some passing entertainment. So given the season, Spooktober, you know, coming up on Halloween, thought I might do a review of this book because this is obviously not the Richard Matheson book that gets the most attention. Uh, so let's talk about Hell House. What is Hell House about? Well, it shares an almost identical premise to another book, a much greater work of horror fiction, The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, which I have already previously done a review on. Um, it actually even, the title is even kind of meant to sound similar, I believe. Um, in fact, I believe that this book was written perhaps as a direct response or something of an attempted rebuttal to The Haunting of Hill House, because I get the sense that Richard Matheson liked the setup of that book, but he didn't like what Shirley Jackson did in that book, because that novel is so, it goes so against the grain uh, as to when it comes to what you expect out of a haunted house story. Um, so I think that the Hell House is kind of Richard Matheson's uh, response to that. Um, but whereas The Haunting of Hill House was a very deftly handled work with some real nuance to it, Hell House is almost, without exception, 100% schlock. Start to finish, this book is schlocky, haphazardly constructed, and borderline offensive in some ways, especially to modern sensibilities. But as I said, it's still it's still kind of stupidly fun. But the premise of Hell House is that there's this old millionaire dude named uh, um, Deutsch, I believe, and he is dying, but he's really rich, and he wants to be assured that there is actually an afterlife which he will go to after death, or that there is some form of existence after death. So he conscripts four people to travel to a house called the Belasco House, uh, which is the titular hell house, which is reportedly the most haunted house on the planet. And he wants them to stay in the house and to verify the existence of the ghosts and specters that roam the halls of the house to thereby um, prove the existence of life after death and, I guess, ease his mind a little bit. And they're going to get paid, I think, if they do. Um, however, this house is direly sinister, and it has killed more than one investigator who has ventured into it in the past. It was the uh, it was the abode of one Emmerich Belasco, who was a devil worshipping occultist who held satanic orgies within the confines of the home and did all kinds of nasty stuff. And so the house is basically evil as crap, and it can kill you. Uh, but these four people go to this house to stay there, and these are four principal characters are Lionel Barrett and his wife Edith, paranormal investigators slash skeptics who believe that there is a scientifically rational explanation behind paranormal and supernatural phenomenons. Phenomena, sorry. Um, and... Uh, the other two characters are Florence Tanner, a um, spiritualist kind of minister woman who also serves as a medium, and one Benjamin Fisher, who is also a medium and the only person to escape the clutches of Hell House on the last expedition that went into it years earlier where all the other investigators were killed by the house. He is the only one that has ventured into the house and come out alive to tell the tale. So these four people go to the house to 
investigate the house as well as to uh, ex uh, try out a machine which has been constructed by Dr. Barrett um, called the reverser machine, which emanates a type of electromagnetic field, which he claims will dispel any hauntings and eradicate all the ghosts that infest the house. So that's the setup. That is the premise. Once again, it is very similar, again, almost identical to The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. People go to a haunted house to experience the haunting and uh, spooky crap goes down. Except this book, as I said, is really stupid and borderline offensive. So uh, the writing in this book is not that great. It's not necessarily bad, but I Am Legend was written better. I remember reading I Am Legend being struck by some of the uh, poetic flair that Richard Matheson demonstrated. There were some really nicely worded passages in I Am Legend. Not so much here. This book, the writing in this book, I get the sense that this was kind of done quickly or it just kind of reads that way a little bit. It, uh, it's it's not bad. I mean, it's just pretty standard writing, but it it's not as strong or as um, lofty as I Am Legend because that's a very well written book. And this book, again, it's not terrible, but it, it I think it could have been better. Uh, but the characters in this book actually are kind of interesting, and that is perhaps the one uh, saving grace to Hell House is that the characters actually are pretty good. So Doctor Barrett is the paranormal investigator who has created this machine, the ghost-killing machine, which he wants to try out on the house. And uh, he has uh, he is a victim of polio. He had polio in his younger days, and so he's uh, crippled. And he's also sexually impotent. That is a very important part of this, and, and it comes into play later. Edith is his wife, and we come to find out rather sexually frustrated wife due to the fact that he can't get it up, so to speak. And um, Florence Tanner is the spiritualist who's kind of a leader of a religious sect who comes here to rid the house of evil and, like, bless the house or whatnot. Uh, and she's a really good character, very warm. She's kind of the most likable character in this. She's very compassionate and such. And then, of course, we have Benjamin Fisher, who was the only person to survive the house the last time people went into it. And he's also pretty interesting. He kind of has some insecurities, and he's not really the most uh, proactive character, and he's kind of living with the trauma of, you know, being the only one to survive when all the other people on the last expedition into the house got killed. And all these characters actually are pretty good. Uh, but the story here is, again, as I said, once more, really dumb, and it has some issues, and it's not. And at the heart of it, it's not scary. That is the main, the, well, one of the main drags on this book, is that it's not scary. Hill House, The Haunting of Hill House, was damn scary, or at least to me, uh, because it relied so much on ambiguity and what's not seen rather than what is. Richard Matheson lacks all of the subtlety that Shirley Jackson possessed in her book. Um, I th and this is absolutely a book written by a man. You know, Hill House, like I said, was very deftly handled. And even though there are some sexual undertones to it, they're very, very nuanced in their depiction. Uh, this is really bad. Like, the, this is absolutely, again, the work of a man, and, and not a very uh, sensitive man at that. Uh, the, the story here, it's not scary because all the ghosts are shown just explicitly. They, they just encounter ghosts, and they're not even scary because you're laughing more than you're, you know, gasping. Because I remember distinctly, there's one part where one of the female characters, because the women in this book get the worst kind of treatment because it's just sexploitation. And I think it's Florence Tanner, the uh, spiritualist. She's like also a dime completely, rather busty, um, very, um, very nice figure, if you know what I mean. And uh, at one point, she gets chased through the house by one of the ghosts with his dick out. And like, what? 
you're not going to scare me with that, Richard Matheson. You're going to make me laugh with that because I remember distinctly he uses the words enormous penis. The ghost was chasing her with his enormous penis. And I was like, that is probably the dumbest thing that I think I've ever read. But it got worse somehow. It got even dumber by the time it wrapped up. But it's not scary because too much is just thrust out there fairly quickly. And again, you're not going to scare people with the ghosts running around with their dicks out. That's just not scary. That's funny. Even though it's meant to be horrifying and grotesque, it had me in stitches when I was reading it, but not not intentionally because that was not the intent here. Uh, but anyway, so there's uh, the, the, the main reason why this doesn't sit well with modern audiences, and you can look on Goodreads and see what I'm talking about is because this book is really a product of its time, but uh, more than that, it's just not very, it's not written in a very sensitive manner. Richard Matheson was kind of ham fisted with some of his themes here, and they can kind of rub modern audiences in the wrong way, I think. Mainly, the, the main friction between the characters in this book arises through the sexual tension, because uh, Dr. Barrett. Uh, he, uh, he's not, he can't perform sexually due to his condition. And uh, so as a result, his wife is kind of sexually frustrated. And so the, the sinister nature of the house kind of amplifies that. But also the main theme here and the thing that I can see getting under a lot of people's skin is that the, the book portrays uh, homosexuality or in particular lesbianism as female homosexuality, that is, as the ultimate horror because the the Edith, Dr. Barrett's wife, is so insecure in her own sexuality. It's like you have to pay really close attention. You have to always be on your guard or else who knows, you could you're you could just spontaneously turn gay. Or at least that's the that's the idea kind of behind this book because again Florence Tanner, the, the other female character, is so uh, buxom and, you know, such a looker. And so there's kind of, Edith is like, she feels so insecure and she's like worried that maybe there's like some kind of latent attraction to her. And it's all just so cringy and bad, especially reading it now. Um, but uh, the story, as I've hopefully have drilled home at this point, ultimately just descends into uh, idiocy, if it, if it wasn't already. Uh, I mean, it starts out really strong. But, I mean, up until the point where they actually get to the house, you're like, this could go some places. But then once they get to the house, it quickly falls apart. Um, it's not scary, even when the, some of the characters start uh, meeting certain fates. It's just not effective. And of course, as I said, the women in this book get the worst treatment. Uh, and there were so many scenes, especially involving Florence Tanner, because he wants to subject the, the hottest woman to the worst kind of sexual violation. And so she gets raped, I guess, by one of the ghosts. But again, what's meant to be horrifying is unintentionally funny in this because he he uses he uses some words in to describe this scene which just aren't the words you should have used like if you read it you know it's just written atrociously how how just dumb it is but then again there's this giant crucifix thing on the wall, except it has an, a, a large erect phallus on it because it's supposed to be blasphemous because the guy who owned the house was like a devil worshiper. So you have this crucifix with a with a erect uh, phallus on it. And then at one point, Florence is standing beneath it. And I think, I think if I remember correctly, she's naked. And then that thing falls off the wall onto her. And guess where that thing winds up? I think you can probably infer what happens. It's, it's just so, it's, as I said, this is a book that's so obviously written by a man. It lacks any sense of grace or tact. It's schlocky. It's dumb as hell. 
And then the ending. So I'm not going to spoil the book uh, if you want to read it, but the ending comes out of nowhere. There is no... Um, there is no build up to that ending. It's it literally felt like he just stopped, like he just lost all interest in writing this, and he was like, "And this happened in the end." It was so quick, so abrupt, and it was just so unearned that it 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 just fell apart. Whatever tenuous threads were holding this book together just were severed by the end, and it just completely came undone. And also, I think there's something of a plot hole with this because the machine, because this is, it again, Richard Matheson likes to approach the supernatural from a scientific vantage, like he did in I Am Legend, where the vampires are explained scientifically. Um, that, I don't really think that worked all that well in that book, but it was kind of palatable because he did it, uh, you know, he did it well enough to where it came off pretty good. Uh, but not so in this book. So he the, the the whole premise is that ghosts, the apparitions that we see that haunt certain places, are the residual electromagnetic energy of deceased humans. But then again, if they're if like if they're made of a tangible physical energy that you can perceive in the mortal realm, then why have people not, why are they, like, why has nobody figured that out before? Uh, like, you should, they should be susceptible to, like, electricity or something. You know what I mean? There's, it opens up some questions that don't really have satisfactory answers. Uh, but anyway, this machine that Dr. Barrett has constructed that when turned on will emit, uh, like, electromagnetic energy or something, or static electricity, I don't even remember, that's going to kill all the ghosts in the house. So they turn it on, um, but it turns out that uh, this energy will not penetrate lead. And as it's revealed at the end, the main villain, the, the, the guy who owned the house, the Velasco guy, who is the primary specter who haunts the house, uh, he surrounded his corpse or wherever he is interred, somewhere down in the bowels of the house's basement or something, he surrounded himself with, like, lead-lined walls or something, and so he survived the machine, which so, there's kind of, you think it, you think it's over, but then it's not, but that really is kind of a plot hole to me, because Dr. Barrett is apparently the first person to ever determine that ghosts can be killed with um, the, the, the machine thing that emits this, it, it, prior to him, nobody really got that ghosts were like electromagnetic energy or whatever they're supposed to be, and if that's the case, then how did he know to surround himself with lead? Like, why would you think that would ever be an issue since you, this machine is like the first thing of its kind? It doesn't really make any sense, and again, the ending, the way they ultimately defeat the evil ghost is, really dumb. Uh, it's This is just a book that was not thought out. I would be curious to know how long it took Richard Matheson to write this because it couldn't have been that long because it, it reads like it was something that was very poorly thought out and rushed through. Um, but the characters, as I said, are kind of interesting. There really is some some interesting dynamics between them, even if it's kind of cringy and borderline offensive. Uh, but yeah, to rate Hell House by Richard Matheson, I would give this just an even C. It's not terrible, and there really is some fun to be had here if you're if you want like a good laugh. But in, this book was never meant to make you laugh, but it, it made me laugh. Uh, if you want some if you want some lols, you can check this out. It's not terrible again, but it it's not really what I can call good. Um, but yeah. Hell House by Richard Matheson. Have you read Hell House? If you have, let me know down in the comments what you thought about it, whether you have agreed or disagreed with uh, anything I've said about it here today. And if you haven't read Hell House, as I just said, if you want a good chuckle, uh, you might want to pick this up. I would not consider this um, among Richard Matheson's strongest works. Again, the only other full-length book that I've read by him is I Am Legend. I read some of his short stories. Uh, but 
I Am Legend was a really good book. Like, that's a bona fide classic. This is a different story. Um, but, I mean, um, What Dreams May Come or um, Bid Time Return, I, don't, I can't speak as to those, but I've heard good things about those books. But this book, as they say, this ain't it. But, again, you might want to pick it up if you're just a Richard Matheson fan, a completionist. Or if you just see it uh, used like I did, thankfully, for just a couple bucks, you might want to pick it up. But anyway, and as always, if you have enjoyed anything you've seen or heard here today, remember to like, subscribe, help the channel out a little bit. And until next time, peace.